talking about anything Power Ranger related, in light of what's happened over the last little bit, it hurts now a little bit because of the passing of Jason David Frank. And also, I, um, <laughs> back in the day, I had a, I had a thing that I wanted it <clears throat> to be where all the original Power Rangers would be able to sign it. Well, I know that it's impossible because, of course, Tui Trang, unfortunately, passed away before, you know, she passed away back, way back in 2001, so there, you know, that's an impossibility, but I at least wanted to get the remaining Power Rangers who are still here. Uh, of course, uh, Jason David Frank was one that I wanted. Also, Austin said, I actually got Austin's signature on the bottom of the uh, mech that we made that was inspired by Power Rangers. And then, of course, uh, <laughs> Walter, I also got Walter, the original Black Ranger. He was super cool. Also, I didn't realize he was missing uh, part of his finger on one hand. Yeah, he's actually missing, like, part of his ring finger on one hand and from a, from an accident on set. And then, uh, of this course, <laughs> yeah. Then, of course, Amy Jo Johnson and David Yost. I wanted, I wanted to have all of them sign it. And I had an opportunity to knock out the remaining three at a convention. I remember it was just before the pandemic, and Jason David Frank, Amy Jo Johnson, and David Yost were all going to be there. And I couldn't go. Something came up, plans got shifted, and I had to hold off. And I said to myself, ah, I'll still be able to get him later on. Yeah. That sucks. Also, uh, met Jason David Frank a long, long time ago. Super, super nice guy. Super, super, like, cool dude. And the fact that he's not here anymore sucks. I mean, I, I have something similar with bands, because <clears throat> I was at a giant festival that Linkin Park was <coughs> headlining. So as we walked out, we were hearing Linkin Park play from a distance, but we were like, ah, we'll go see Linkin Park, you know, and they're yeah. just playing their own show, and then Chester. Yeah. And then we walked out of another giant festival that Soundgarden was headlining, and we heard Soundgarden playing from oh, a distance. And man. I was like, ah, we'll go see Soundgarden when it's just them, you know. And that, those two, Chris, that those two that close together, mm -hmm. you know, Chris. It's like then, each of those two happened, like, the two festivals were like the one year after the other too and so me and chance convinced ourselves that like if we go to any more festivals we need to see the headliner because we're cursing these dudes yeah <laughs> at this point that's what that's how it feels we're not giving credit where credit is due and the universe is taking it away from us like as a result yeah like, and and now that lincoln park is basically done i mean because the other one was like well we've seen megadeth before so we'll just sit way back here on the hill and just listen to them from a distance and then their drummer passed away oh, <laughs> after that man. too so i'm just like I guess we need to start seeing bands up close in person if we want them to be okay. Yeah. I, you never want to take opportunities for granted because you never know when those opportunities are just going to disappear. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, my mom was my mom kicked herself for not seeing the Eagles before, Don, before Glenn Fry passed away. Because she loved the Eagles. It was one of, their fa one of her favorite bands. She saw them on the Hell Freezes Over tour back in 1994, but she wanted to see them again uh, before he passed or before anything happened. But unfortunately, Glenn passed away. Now the Eagles are still going, but they are, but it's a different lineup. All a lot of the original members are there, but yeah, it's just uh, that you you want to take advantage of it while you can, and. We weren't able to do this when it originally came out. I'm not sure why. Because I remember this was requested, but I think something else was happening at the time, and we, we just weren't able to have an opportunity to do it. And I'm not sure what it was, but either way, here we are now with Leonardo versus Red Ranger Jason. That is the OG Red Ranger Jason, a.k.a. the first original leader of the Power Rangers, before Tommy came in, because uh, th that was the thing. 
Jason was the leader, and then Tommy came in, and Tommy was so popular that they basically gave him the lead role whenever they made him the White Ranger. And that's that's crazy to me, dude. Because I, I think about that. I was like, dude, imagine you're given the leadership role. You know, you're given the, the quote-unquote lead role in this series. And then a random guy comes in for, like, a, a special thing. And then all of a sudden he gets more popular than you. And, it, and I can understand... Austin St. John, the guy who played Jason, I understand his apprehension to, like, to, like, why him and Jason David Frank butted heads so much. And it, it stayed the same. Because <clears throat> I guess, you know, rivalries of youth never really officially die. Him and, uh, like, Austin St. John and Jason David Frank butted heads for a long, long time. To the point where they actually... We're like talking about having a private MMA fight for charity that never went anywhere. And that's crazy to think about, dude. Because I saw Jason David Frank whenever he was doing MMA, and he was pretty good. His takedown, his takedown defense was awful, but, I mean, whenever he got his hands on you, he could, he could tie you up. He just needed to work on his wrestling. That's all I... That was my only critique of him. But, yeah, anyway... Leonardo versus Red Ranger Jason, Ninja Turtles versus Power Rangers, Death Battle. No, got... Just throwing this out here, like, I watched Ninja Turtles a little bit as a oh, kid. Oh, I watched I it I played a lot. the NES game some. I played a little bit of the other games. I've never just been a super Ninja Turtles fan, though. Well. But uh, <laughs> Michelangelo was always my favorite. Uh, I just don't know a lot about the Ninja Turtles. Leo was always mine. This is probably my favorite... Ninja Turtles game. I've always heard people talk about that game. I've never actually played it. It is awesome. That's it is so damn good. Uh, I'll say this. I do own a Ninja Turtles game. I do not own a Power Rangers game. So, I guess there's that. Although there is more of an abundance. As a kid, I definitely own the Power Rangers toys, but I think I oh, yes. maybe one Michelangelo toy at one point. Now, I, I've got I've got a shit ton of Power Rangers toys out there, and i got a shit ton of... Uh, well, not as many, but I have... A fair amount of Ninja Turtle stuff, too. It's basically me and my next-door neighbor between us had almost the entire first two seasons worth of all of the Power Rangers themselves <coughs> that had, like, the little flippy heads where they could yes. flip their heads yes. so their helmet would be on or off. Plus their weapons, uh, full-size, that you could actually, like, yeah. you know, fit together into the big gun and stuff. That and was then awesome. they also had all the, Zo uh, the Zords as well. Like, yes. It's like they we each had different ones, and it was pretty much like... My mom would so call good. if she was going to get me a new one to see, like, uh, what Levi had. So we made sure we got different ones that like, when we hung out. Whenever y'all like, come together, you can, More like, overall, you know? Yeah. Like, the Power now, Rangers to mess with. I never had that. Um, my mom... I, my mom basically told me, like, if you want this stuff, I'll get it for you. But here's a list of things I need you to do. And if you complete them within the week... Then I'll then I'll get you that. I think mine were always Christmas and birthday presents. Some some of those were that, but uh, but you know I was impatient. I was impatient with some of them, and I basically like begged her. I was like, "Hey, what do I have to do? What do I have to do?" And she's like, "Okay," and it was basically stuff like clean the gutters, clean out the flower garden, uh, like pick up, uh, you know, clean up in your dad's shed, uh, you know, uh, uh you know, uh. What was it? It was, um, there was also, oh yeah, clear the, uh, Bless you. you all right, buddy? It was basically like just a lot of around the house stuff <clears throat> that my mom, <clears throat> that my mom had to do, but she just dumped it off on me so that, you know, she would be able to not, not have to worry about it. Yeah. And you know what? That was fair. That was fair. I worked it. I worked those and I was able to get a few more things. Uh, on top of what I got for Christmas and birthdays, and I love and I love those toys. I love those toys growing up, uh, as evidenced by the fact that I still have them back there on the storage shelves beyond the behind the wall here. Gosh, I am such a nerd. I can't help myself. But Leonardo versus Red Ranger Jason. Let's get into this. Here we go. 
Also, the fact that we talked about Power Rangers stuff for like about 10 when minutes before we actually started this video. Oh, and, and I don't mean like before we started this video, before we even started recording. Oh, we yeah. went on for about 10 minutes before. God. Saturday morning tunes. That's where I learned all my badass karate moves. Yeah. The 80s and 90s certainly gave us some memorable characters and epic playground rivalries. Like Leonardo and what was Hancho that about? The... <laughs> the 90s certainly gave us some memorable characters and epic playground rivalries. I think it's just his incessant crunching that's annoying him. He's like very loudly munching down on his cereal. And he's annoyed by it. Because he's just like, he's like, dude, seriously? Leonardo, head honcho of the team. And you had to use the shittiest version of Leonardo. I hated that movie so much. I hated it. It was not a good movie. Never watched it. Don't. Save your, save your mind. I was planning to. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Why didn't you use, like, the original version from, like, the 87 cartoon or, or anything else? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And Jason Lee Scott, leader of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. For this bout, we'll be sticking to the characters themselves. That means no Dragon Zords, no Turtle Max, and no last-minute power of friendship. Just a good old-fashioned one-on-one. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. This might be like the lowest power ceiling battle <coughs> I've seen on here in quite some time. <laughs> well, yeah, because... This is more just two martial artists. Like, with, like, some extra strength. With ninjutsu and, like, some power effects from, from like, artifacts that they... Well, the Power Rangers one, that one's going to be interesting because what's the power ceiling on what the power coin gives you from the morpher? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, for Leonardo, it's like, he's a he's literally a giant freaking reptile who can, like, who has a giant armored shell on his back. Like, how much, like... I wonder what his power ceiling is. Anyway. Uh, I would say it's just far below the universe busting stuff we've been watching recently. Yeah, because we did just literally watch Flash and Sonic break timelines to try and kill each other. Mm -hmm. Flash one, by the way. From the vastness of space to the eerie depths of the ocean, few places remain as mysterious and unknown as the New York City sewer system. <laughs> Anything could be down there. Killer alligators, mole people, or even Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay, use that version of Leonardo, because, dude, the Jim Henson puppets in these fil or in the first two films are nothing short of amazing. I like, always thought they were creepy as a kid. I loved them as a kid. I was like, dude... In terms of like anthropomorphic, you know, bipedal, like muscular turtles, I'm like, you can't, you can't find anything more accurate than that. Now the ones that were in the TV series and the third movie, ooh, the less we talk about them, the better. You didn't like the animated TV series? No, no, the live action TV series. Oh, okay. There was a live action TV series that was. It had some stuff in it that was okay, but dear God in heaven, was it was it just not necessary. Terrapins transformed into humanoid superheroes by a chance encounter with a canister of mysterious mutagenic ooze. Easy they were adopted right. by an equally mutated rat skilled in martial arts who decided now that's to the one I always watched artists. as a kid. You know, yeah, even same. By comic book standards, this origin story is pretty freaking weird. Master Splinter. Tra oh, you think? Okay. Eastman and Laird, when they came up with it, had no intention of it being, like, for kids or anything like that. It was actually very much, like, R-rated. I mean, dude, like, all of the... Also, in the original, all of them wore red masks. You couldn't really tell which one was which. It wasn't until later they added the color palettes to, like, determine who was who. But all of them used to wear red. And... Leonardo, in one of the comics, decapitates the Shredder. Whoa. Yeah. Dude, it got, it got hardcore. I mean, Eastman and Laird, like, they had no intention of this ever becoming 
for kids. It wasn't until they sold the property or licensed it that it became what it is. Trained them as ninja, and the group formed a daring crime-fighting team. But every team needs a leader. Donatello did machines, but tactics? Nah. Raphael was tough, but way too hot-headed. And Michelangelo? Well, we all know he got dropped as a kid. So the <laughs> obvious choice was the true blue Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, yeah, close enough. Of all the turtles, Leonardo mostly I just thought Michelangelo had the coolest weapon. I thought well, the, the nunchucks, nunchucks were the coolest. Well, yeah, weapon. nunchucks when used properly are like are like awesome. And I thought the size looked cool in the show. And what made me dislike the size was how trash they are in the NES game. Yeah, that's the shortest range weapon, and it is definitely the hardest character to play with Raph because of that. Yeah, like Raph's so hard to play because the size just hit like just basically a couple pixels in front of you. Yeah, whereas Leonardo, his his katanas are good mid range. I would say, well, Donnie Donatello definitely has the best range because of the bow yeah, staff. Donatello is hands down the best character in <coughs> the NES game because you can hit enemies from way further away. Yeah, I'll say this in Turtles in Time, Raph, like, there's a trade off. Raph hits harder than the others, but yeah, his attack range is not the best. Whereas Leonardo, good mid-range attack, and also probably the second most powerful. Mikey is the fastest, by far, in terms of his attack speed. Because just a... Just whipping the, the nunchucks around. And then Donnie, his attacks aren't slow, but it definitely there's definitely a little bit more wind-up with his. But there's trade-offs, you know. Also, uh, I didn't realize he was only 5'2". That's kind of funny. Also, I love the fact that it's Leonardo Splinter Son, as if they're doing... They're, the Son of Splinter. Well, they're... Okay, because it, it's a mixture of three different cultures here. They're using Japanese culture for, like, the ninjutsu and the, you know, the martial arts and everything. Leonardo, as in Leonardo... He's named after Leonardo da Vinci, the paint, you know, like yeah. the... You know, it's the all four inventor of them are named after different... Different Italian, like, yeah. like different Italian artists... And then Splinterson, which is Norse, which is traditionally like a Viking thing. Mm -hmm. You your last name is your father's name plus son. As in, for me, I would be uh, I would be Nathan Bryanson, and you would be Nicholas uh, what Howardson. Nicholas Howardson. See, some work better than others. To be honest, I think that's a cooler last name than Owen. Yeah. Also. Owen is in there. Howard's son. Oh, wait, almost. Because no, there's no exactly. E. There's no E. Studious and focused when it came to Splinter's lessons, and soon adopted the principles of Bushido. Kind of weird since that's a samurai code and he's a ninja, but... That's Japanese. It's in the same ballpark. And whatever. The modern tenets of Bushido have evolved over the centuries, but it essentially boils down to eight virtues. Righteousness, courage, compassion, respect, honesty, honor, duty, and self-control. All of which frankly describes Leonardo to a T. Yes. AKA, he's super dedicated to being a goody two-shoes. And he's a badass when it comes to fighting. He's like the Bruce Lee of reptiles. And since he's eternal, Leo's got super speed and super strength. I'm not sure the science checks out on that one. He's also also got that super tough shell and some radical ninja weapons. Right, but before we go any further, we should address that there are multiple iterations of Leonardo across different media and mm -hmm. timelines. As none of them can really be considered the main one, we're taking... Yeah, see? Original one right there. All of them uh, had... Okay. All of them wore red masks. The only way you could tell is some of them had darker, like, darker skin and also the weapons. Yeah. Making all standard versions into account, or anything that's reasonable, consistent, or viable across his multiple histories. So we're not including anything that's too out of the ordinary, like those weird double mutations or that time he became a goddamn dragon. I mean, good on you, Leo, but that's a little out of your typical wheelhouse. Leonardo is a master of Niten Ichiryu, a Japanese fighting style using twin katana. Although Leo's swords are typically a more recent variant called Ninjaki. Basically just katana without the curve. Still yeah, way better than wielding tiny forks or a literal stick. Seriously, who picked out the other turtle's weapon? Leonardo's what? Nunchuck, nunchucks are actually, well, they're 
They're very hard to master, but they can be fun. Incredibly deadly, even sharp enough to slice through metal. But he still finds ways to break those things all the time. Good yeah. thing he's also got kunai, smoke bombs, shuriken, climbing claws, grappling guns, hell, most of the <coughs> Batman approved gear. In his latest outing, he's even got this Odachi, basically the claymore of ninja swords, but it's super special. Right, with a swing of the blade, it can open portals that can take its wielder anywhere from across the room or all the way to Tahiti. Time for a vacation! Yeah! Oh, be careful! I think the rules of space could be catastrophic. Yeah, uh, relax, Wiz, I totally have one. Not it really digging to... that recent art style change there. No, that, that art style is not. Uh, Again, I I checked out. That's on, got Teen Titans Go vibes to it. Yeah, I me. checked out on the uh, like the Ninja Turtles after probably the original series ended in '97. Every now and again, I've intermittently tuned in. Uh, I think like the uh, the 2000 like like 2003 animated one was actually pretty good. But yeah, after that, I I didn't really pay attention. Pull this up. Okay, maybe I'll go with the staycation instead. Probably for the best. Weapons aside, Leonardo has proved skilled enough to master rare ninjutsu knowledge such as the Healing Hands Mantra, a meditation technique. Say goodbye to that nasty migraine or pesky stab wound. Not quite potent enough to heal fatal wounds, but useful nonetheless. Other than that, the dude's fast enough to outrun explosions and has even dodged lightning. This enemy in particular was specifically granted the power of a storm, implying these bolts are comparable to natural lightning. Therefore, Leonardo must be able to react to things 280 times faster than sound. Ha! And you thought turtles were slow. Also, he's strong enough to push over a giant pillar to crush a cockroach monster, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Baron Drexum who survived this explosion, and held open the jaws of a monster-fied T-Rex. The Tyrannosaurus is theorized to have had a bite force of 12,800 pounds per square inch, six times more powerful than an alligator. And best of all, even across multiple timelines, good old Leo is usually the one to take down the turtle's <coughs> biggest villain and least useful kitchen utensil, the Shredder. No <laughs> wonder he's the leader, Leo's a boss. Sure, he may have a habit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know they did that in the in the uh, uh, 2003 animated series. Apparently so. That's pretty cool. Bit of questioning his own abilities and decisions, but hey, he's a teenager. Par for the course. One thing's for sure, he's a mean, green fighting machine who's always up for a shell of a good time. Okay. Was that Ra's al Ghul? Yes, that was. That was the <laughs> Batman and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, uh. which is actually really, really good. Really good, dude. Holy shit. I did not expect it to be that good. Sorry, I had to get a sip of drink. My okay. throat was getting parched. It's okay. Uh, plus, Shredder versus uh, versus Batman. Arguably, like, one of my favorite animated fights from, like, the last ten years. Yeah, I don't think I, I, don't think I remember that that was a thing. Yeah. It's good, dude. It's really good. All right, so that's Leo. With his speed and his strength. <clears throat> I hope Jason's got some crazy stuff he's done that I don't remember. Well, given the power of the like power coin and the morpher, there's guaranteed to be at least a few things that he'll have. That... I feel like I slightly remember him like holding open something that he shouldn't have been able to hold open at some point or something like that. Yeah. Know? So, I don't know. Maybe he's pretty strong. Maybe. We'll see. After 10,000 years, the evil interstellar witch Rita Repulsa was finally <laughs> released from her long- Now at last I'm free! Time to conquer Earth! <laughs> I still remember that, because I got that on VHS. Yeah. I watched that, uh, it was like the first three episodes. I remember watching that for the first time as a kid, just being like, oh. Well, didn't they put it as the intro on the Fox Kids show, like, yes. every single time? Yeah. Yeah. So, it was for like the first season yeah, when Rita and so, I saw Rita that a bunch like of times villain. because of that. Gosh. Prison. Which, and I need to point this out, was an actual space dumpster. Yeah. Gross. No <laughs> wonder she was so pissed off that she decided to attack Earth on the spot. To combat her vile magics, the good natured sage in a tube Zordon sought out a team of heroes. Sage and for whatever reason, specifically <coughs> requested five overbearing and over emotional humans. No! 
Yeah, it's like it's like Alpha. Summon five teenagers with attitudes. <laughs> <laughs> The five teens yeah. connected to the Morphin Grid, an energy field that transformed them into the mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Go, go, Power Rangers! I never get tired of doing that. Man, if that wasn't cool enough, the Peach Ranger would... I remember me and Jake actually learned how to play that down here. I feel like that theme song may be the reason that I got into metal whenever I was finally introduced to metal. Because, like, I always loved that theme song. Yeah. And then, like, going back and listening to it in retrospect, I was like, this song was metal for a kid's show. Oh, dude, yeah. I mean, it's freaking shreds, man. It does. Me and Jake were down here, and Jake learned how to play, like, the solo part. And I was like, yes! That's so good. Hold on. I, I just gotta hear a little. I just gotta Say, hear a little. Young bit of people it. have never heard this. Like you're in for a treat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that we did the finger tapping at the exact same time. It was so good. Mm. Oh my god. <clears throat> Probably won't be able to include that. Uh, completely because of the uh, because of it, but I'll I'll include the finger tapping part. <laughs> oh my god, so good. Was bonded to a giant robot dinosaur. There was the blue triceratops, the yellow saber tooth tiger, the black mastodon, the pink pterodactyl, and finally the red tyrannosaurus. This would go to the Red Ranger and leader of the team, Jason Lee Scott. Jason was a pretty chill and level-headed guy, and already good enough at martial arts to be teaching classes. He's skilled in Kenpo, Taekwondo, Judo, and notably the more unknown Shinkido, a mix of karate and Japanese sword fighting. And he dabbled in hip-hop keto. But to get all the martial arts skill he'd ever need, all he's gotta do is hold out that mighty power coin and yell, Morphin Wrong power coin. <laughs> Wrong power coin. Just wanna point that out. Is hold out that mighty power coin. That Where is the Dragon Zord power coin. That's the Green Ranger's power coin. Mm. It's so bad that I know the I know like which one's oh. which. Morphin <laughs> <coughs> Oh yeah. Chills, man. Every time. Morphing into his Red Ranger form did indeed grant Jason an unprecedented level of martial arts mastery. No, look at it. That that corkscrew kick. That's pretty superhuman in my opinion. I've never really seen anybody do that in real life. No. I mean, you gotta think, given the power that he's given from this, enhanced speed, enhanced strength, enhanced, like, you know, like, reaction times, stuff like that. Plus durability. Plus durability and everything. Guarantee you, she like, like with all this, he's got, like, an untold amount of, like, athletic ability. And, like, not just be, I'd say beyond peak human physical capabilities. At least enough to not be completely washed by a Ninja Turtle, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Also, I did not realize that Jason was only five foot eight. Jesus. Yeah, I didn't either. Dude, like, you're 5'11". Yeah, I grew up to be taller than him. I'm 6'2". Dude. Dude, I could have bullied. I could have bullied a Power Ranger. <laughs> I'm just joking. Oh God. No, uh, he would have kicked our ass. <laughs> he would have, if we're being honest. Because, <laughs> you know, I like me. I knew how to wrestle and I knew how to do some boxing and stuff like that. But, you know, he'd probably exploit the fact that I'm just too big, and he'd probably just like beat the shit out of me. Plus, I just I got bullied. I didn't bully people. I didn't either. I got bullied a lot. A lot of people wanted to fight me because I was big. He'd grant Jason an unprecedented level of martial arts mastery. Even Billy, the Blue Ranger, who barely knew any martial arts at all, became a fist-fighting master after morphing. The Red Ranger form also boosts Jason's speed and strength to superhuman levels. And see there you those are. sparks? Teleportation the for the risk communicator. And it'll keep doing that until it's overloaded from too many attacks. Good guy Grit over here. Where do I get one? Jason is a powerhouse, focusing on strong <coughs> high moves like his power punch to send foes flying across the battlefield. And 
and he can use the energy of the grid to take a bite out of Putty with his Tyrannosaurus Charge. But when punches and kicks aren't enough, he's got a bunch of colorful weapons that definitely aren't toys, no matter how plastic they look. Like the first communicator, which doubles as a teleporter. And the Blade Blaster is both a knife and a gun. A gun knife. A gun knife. A knife -o. A gun blade. Yes. And for like tougher fights, he can... Uh... Alright, Wiz, uh, what's the over-under on my modification here working? Um, not very effective, buddy. I mean, it's cool that you got a shotgun for a leg, but you attach that many knives to it, you're gonna have issues. Uh, uh are you sure about this? We already have enough holes in the floor. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say, if you walk across my wood floor, I'm gonna be pissed. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna say, he'll probably get stuck in the wood floor because of the amount of knives on there. Probably. He'll probably just be like, and then oh, he ended up shit. blowing a hole in the floor trying to pull it out. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like that. I'm okay. I'm not okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Damn okay. it, Boomstick. Never mind, I've been stabbed. <laughs> For tougher fights, Jason can also summon the Power Sword, a unique blade that can slice through even the most powerful of monsters. It's also a key component to the Power Blaster. Which is, uh, let me guess here, powerful. Um, yes, the no Power shit. Blaster can destroy creatures even the dinosaurs have trouble with. Except he's not going to be allowed to use that. He needs all of his friends to use that. Yeah. So why are you going over it, Tim? I'm from busting out the big guns right away. Right, they technically cannot escalate a fight, so unless the more powerful weapons are deemed necessary, they are generally considered off-limits. So dumb. Regardless, the Red Ranger is incredibly impressive, even without his weapons. He's strong enough to lift boulders way bigger than him. Scaling this boulder to Jason's own height, we can estimate That's it weighs a little impressive. over 69 tons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. And the Yellow Ranger, who has the same basic powers as Jason, pushed around a much larger boulder that, when using the same scaling method, appears to weigh over 11,000 tons. These two can run so fast they kick up huge clouds of dust behind them. And in a later series, Power Rangers in Space! The Rangers could keep pace with the Supercar <coughs> Storm Blaster. Technically, every ranger draws from the same source of power, the Morphin Grid, so it's fair to at least compare Jason to other ranger teams. Like when the SPD Green Ranger chucked a car through the air. <laughs> Those VFX! It looks so shitty. Oh Jason my god! Teams. Like Those VFX, SPD like, dude, look at this. Just like, hey, look at this, a regular everyday the sedan. Green ranger chucked a car. Oh, hey, look, everyone, a PNG of an almost completely different car. I was going to say, they didn't, yeah, and they didn't even bother to do any, like, shadow work on it. Yeah. The lighting on that is so Ranger fucking teams. off. Like when the SPD also, look at the wheels. Eagle look at the wheels. Chucked a car. <laughs> That's completely different. <laughs> like, this is literally a PNG that they probably found on the internet. Pretty much. Or through the air. Look at... Man, they hired an amateur effects artist for oh, that. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I hate laughing at that, but it's just so, it's so bad. We need him to throw a car. Well, we have $20 left in the weekly budget. I know a guy. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's just like some dude who's just like, is just like, so you want me to do what with the car? I'll do my best. Yep. And, then that, and then he turns that in. It's just like, buddy, your best wasn't good enough, but we'll take it. Yeah. Dodge lightning, at least for a bit, and tough enough to survive the Power Ranger command center <coughs> exploding while he was inside. That's not even the first time the place blew up. Man, that building seriously been through the ringer. To be fair, it's important to remember that the Ranger powers are not permanent and his connection to the Morphin Grid has limits. Yeah. If he takes enough damage and loses his morph, Jason goes back to being a normal human being, albeit one who is a talented fighter in his own right. But with the glorious red spandex and Robo T-Rex in his back, the power lies on his side. You wanna fight? You got it! All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, all this talking has made me hungry for Blue Apron. No, it has not. 
All right, so. Who you got? I think it's going to be Leonardo. I think so too. And I think the reason for that is because I had actually forgotten about like them getting beat up bad enough that they got knocked out of their transformations. I think that's going to be the thing. Oh. That it's my mama. Oh. Sorry. Hold on. Okay. Sorry, everybody. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. That was my mom. She uh, just got back from her little vacation that she was on, and uh, I told her to call me as soon as she got back. And, uh, oh, Bilbo, what are you doing up here? Bilbo. Look at it. Look at the black cat. Oh, buddy. Come here. Which is, you can see him against the black couch in the background. Uh, now you can see him a bit more. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Oh, such a sweet boy. He's he's a soft baby. Y'all don't, y'all, y'all won't believe when I tell you how soft this boy is. He is extremely we're taking a moment with the kitty. I'm just going to plop one of these drops in my eyeball because it's itchy. Go ahead. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. What a good boy. Y'all can't see him because I'm, I'm embracing him too much. Just like, mm, buddy. Look at him. Look at him. Hey, you want to go over to Nick? You want to say hi to Nick real quick? There you go. Oh. He went and there all he goes. across and out of the view. Well, damn. Oh, well. At least we got to see him for a little bit. Anyway. I uh, guess let's uh, go ahead and check out this death battle before it gets too late. <clears throat> or before someone else calls to interrupt. So here we go. This is Leonardo versus uh, Red Ranger Jason. You're going with Leonardo, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. I think he's going to knock him out of his transformation. That's going to be what he gets. What what gets him? Based on what I, I'm going against my better judgment. I would pick Leonardo, but just so we can have some solidarity, I'm picking Jason. I'm picking Red Ranger Jason. So anyway, here we go. Uh-oh, the cardinal sin of wasting pizza. Dude! Sorry, I'm late for... Huh, one of Frida's monsters! Who? <laughs> Bro! You're the monster for ruining my pizza. <laughs> Time to take out the trash. It's <coughs> the guitar! Don't count me out yet! <laughs> Love this 8 bit track that they're going with. The music is awesome. Yes. Don't blame me for not being impressed. Really, dude? Leo's swords are gonna break. Yep. They always do. Audacious. Ow. Oh, this ain't strictly. Yo, what are you doing down there? Oh, nothing. Tights, I'm all healed up. Behold the immortal turtle. <laughs> Uh oh. Deflections. <laughs> oh no. Oh. 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 He got him. Damn. <coughs> that was bonkers. <laughs> Damn! Looks like Leo 
totally didn't see that coming. Are you, you already gonna, made that, bud. I'm gonna keep reusing that one, or should I expect something new? No, oh, I'm sorry. Do you want me to shell out some more puns? Fine, fine. Leonardo certainly had more martial arts experience than Jason, mm -hmm. and he was likely a bit faster, as we've seen him dodge lightning more reliably. If it were just up to those two factors, the Ninja Turtle may have won. But you know there's more to it. Sure, Leo had some super tough defense on his side, but Jason had the oomph to crack that shell. First of all, Leonardo's superior training was a moot point, as Jason's morph granted him a broad mastery of martial arts talent automatically. Kind of cheap if you ask me, but eh, that's Power Rangers for you. But let's talk <laughs> numbers. Giving Leonardo the benefit of the doubt, we scaled his level of toughness to his recurring villain, Baron Draxum. Who's fought Leo a bunch of times? Remember how Draxum survived his lab exploding? That's definitely the best durability feat Leo could possibly match. By yeah. scaling the lab to the height of the characters, then deducing the size of the explosion itself, its explosive yield must equal about 12 tons of TNT. Pretty impressive, but then we used the same method on the control center exploding while Jason was inside, and it came out to 550 tons of TNT, uh. 45 times greater than Leonardo. So clearly Jason was much tougher, but we still had to find their overall strength. To do that, we compared Leo's bug crushing pillar to the Rangers bowling with boulders. Mm, Using granite boulder. as an average potential density and scaling the pillar to Leonardo's height, it appears to weigh about 240 metric tons. Still impressive, but way less than the 11,000 ton boulder. The mm. Red Ranger couldn't just crack that shell, he could make turtle soup out of it. I was Leonardo thinking this whole time, is, is he going to make, <laughs> make a turtle soup pun? There you go. Advantages in speed and skill, making this fight far from one-sided. However, Jason's superior strength, arsenal, and powers quickly turn the tide. His ranger of abilities does what Leonard don't. The winner is Jason, the Red Ranger. Fair enough. I would have picked him out of bias because obviously I was a way bigger Power Rangers fan as a kid, you know, but I just felt for some reason like they were going to use the fact he could be knocked out of his suit as like the... You know the weakness that got him. Well, but, uh, and I think if it were if they only included the show, that would be the case. But where they included the comic where the command center got blown up mm. with them inside of it, that added the durability factor to Jason. It makes it like a lot more impressive for the enemies they fight when you realize that there's enemies that hit them so hard they got knocked back out of their transformations. You know. Yes. Whatever you have that level of comparison there it's like damn those enemies hit them hard oh dude. yeah <laughs> like crazy they they it's like bro hit hard oh mm -hmm. uh, so, so anyway. at least the strength of more than like <coughs> quite a few t hundred tons of tnt you know oh yeah uh, it's like enemies that would actually just punch straight through your chest if you were a regular person and they hit you oh yeah be like that scene from kung pao enter the fist yeah basically just punch it and then it's just like a hole, and then behind him is like a, a sectional cutout of like, of like a circular cutout. Or the F and D chest. films I showed you is like, which one of you is getting punched? Yeah. It's like, killed your friend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just punches all the, the way through his face out of the back of his head. Yeah. His fist is just covered in blood. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so... That was a heck of a death battle, and I'm glad that we were able to experience it. And I want to thank y'all for recommending it. Leonardo versus Red Ranger Jason. Uh, hopefully y'all enjoyed uh, this uh, little escapade into death battle. And uh, hopefully you're enjoying us going back and uh, going over a lot of the older ones. So, If anyway. there are more older ones that have, like, non-universe busting, like, levels of power, I would be interested if y'all would recommend those if I haven't seen them. Yeah. Because... We watch so many that are just on ridiculous power levels, you know, that it's interesting to me to see the ones that are not quite on that same level, too. True. Very true. Uh, anyway, that's going to do it, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Nate. I am Nick. Y'all be good people. Take care.